Hey, what's up, you guys? My name is Cypress Wolf, and welcome back to LEGO Arts. So, in the last video, we did a showcase on the LEGO Mecha Godzilla, which I'm pretty proud of how that came out. So, for this episode, we're gonna do the final two Ruby showcases we have going on right now, and the first one we're showcasing is Teen Coffee, Coffee from Volume 1 through 3, and also the spin-off book, After the Fall. There it falls. So, as you can see, we have all the members from Teen Coffee. We have Coco, Fox, Velvet, and Yatsuhashi. I see. So these characters are some of my favorites of Ruby. Uh, of Ruby. Like, in order of my favorite teams, it'd have to be Team Ruby, Team Juniper, and then comes in Team Coffee. In Coffee. These characters are really, really amazing. They're really amazing. Amazing. And from the videos that I've seen of them, I really love, uh, like, their combat. And I would like to see, like, a spin-off show, you know, show of the characters. Characters, but I've read a little bit of After the Fall. After the Fall. I haven't read all of it. Not all of it, but I want to one day. And they, so, I decided that, like, if I want to do more Ruby characters, how about do these guys? These guys, because they look pretty cool. They're pretty cool. And they weren't quite as difficult to do, like, the Volume 7. Volume 7, like, for Ruby. But uh, we're definitely a challenge in our own special ways, and I'll explain to them as I go. So, as you guys know the whole drill, we're going to take these mini figures one at a time, do a review in them, explain my process, why we're with this route, and then go from there. So, without further ado, let's get the pedestal out and get the showcase on the road. So going in order to start off our showcase is Coco. Coco. Okay, so I removed the minigun. 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 So we can get a better look at the character. We'll bring it back in, uh, back in shortly. But for now, let's take a closer look at the character itself. So when doing Coco was actually one of the last few figures to do because some of the detailing, detailing, I found, I kept going like back and forth of uh, making sure that I got this right. That's right. So decal wise, the only ones I really did were the face and the torso. The torso, or so I hand drew on Drawcast. Okay, so on the front and back, and then printed those off, and those off, and in the face, in the face, I found like a female, you know, decal face that had sort of like Coco's, oh, kind of face, sort of like that kind of smirk, and a smirk, almost like that, uh, sort of like that cocky attitude, the attitude that she demonstrated in the show, and I photoshopped like the sunglasses, sunglasses onto her, because I feel you know, like uh, that's one of like the character traits with Coco, because she can't go around without her shades. So, and so after that, and printed those off, and those off, I then focused on the rest of the character. Rest of the character, I, I first found like this, you know, like this regular like light brown kind of uh, kind of torso. But then when applying the decals on, I kept re having to repaint it a few times because the color wouldn't match, and I wanted the color to match it all together. So after finally finding the right kind of brown and brown, it all worked very well. Uh, this fabric across that's her neck. That's her neck is supposed to be like that little uh, that puffy turtleneck, turtleneck like that she has in her outfit. Outfit. This was a similar approach that I did with Sinon. Enon from SAO, SAO. Only, only with her, however, her, however, we can remove the head. With this one, I'm pretty sure I can't. I'm sure I can't. I haven't tried it because I don't want to accidentally ruin off this sculpted like hair, like hair. Like one of the problems with Coco, Coco, is that like when it came to like sculpting out her hair as well as like her beret, right? So with this beret, it's not exactly like it is on the show, but it is sort of like a good example of what you could use, a use if you were making a hair. Making a character like this, or like this, the majority of the beret is intact. I just painted on like these, uh, like this bottom gray outline on, outline on the bottom, and then sculpted the hair around, uh, around the character before painting it a really dark, really dark brown, brown. And then like with her strip, the strip over here, I actually took some like watered down, watered down like orange paint and put that on, and then took some watered down like, uh, down like yellow paint. Oh, man, like the golden yellow paint, so watered it out really, really down, and then painted it in it over here to give her like that streak that she has. It's not exactly like, like like it is on the show, but it does pull off a lot of that idea that like okay, this is Coco, so I can so I can like identify the character. Uh, there's a little bit of paint and uh, paintwork on this arm to represent like the armband that she has as on her right arm. Uh, a little paint, a little paint like on the, on the torso to represent like some you know, some of the fabric bits that uh, bits. Uh, it's from like her turtleneck. Her like I chose to go ahead with this because I think if I did it in three dimensional, it would look uh, it looks super weird and clunky. So I didn't do that. And that same thing with the uh, thing with uh, if you're wondering what this is, this is supposed to represent like the bullet, uh, the bullet strap that she has for her purse. Because uh, if you haven't seen the show, her weapon I mean, is basically it starts out on the purse and then it can actually transform into the minigun, minigun. So this is supposed to represent like the strap. And then, like, uh, these gold lines represent, like, the bullets that are equipped to it. To it. So I almost thought about maybe, like, sculpting out a full, like, purse for her. As for her. But uh, by the time I had added already on, 
all this stuff on to like the head and there wasn't any room to apply the strap on so i found myself stuck and realized that like oh there's not enough room to attach all of this on i'll just on this on well yeah but then i realized that since i already built the minigun uh, minigun it should be fine you know, fine so looking at the rest of this you can see like this fabric waist piece you speed that just goes over here i only had to make one so it was pretty easy and then like some detailing you can see like the gold detailing it's not entirely really as it is on the show on the show because you know, i've often said this but since this is a minifigure leg you're like there's a limited amount of room i can work with work with to incorporate the full character together character together so i had to make some cuts and cuts but you can see like this gold line going down not at the bottom of the foot representing the heel. I did the same thing, same thing with Weiss and Winter. And Winter from volume seven and seven. And then you can see like a little bit of more gold detailing, like if I can move the light a little bit. You can see like some more gold uh, gold lines over here. These represent like some more bullets. Or bullets that uh, go around here, including all the way back, all the way to the back. Uh her fingers, uh, like with her hands, and her hands. I did a little bit of chipping. No chipping, but uh, they do and they do match up with her glove of uh, a majority of the hand, a hand covered in a glove, except for one finger, one finger on each side. Inside was a little hard to get uh, to get like the size correct, but uh, you know, but I did manage to do it as best I could. And this is a bit of cardboard, cardboard that I double layered, double layered, and then glued it on, and glued it onto the belt. Now, and now moving on to the mini gun, mini gun. So with this thing, this thing was a little bit interesting to build. Thing to build the structure, structure like the overall structure design is similar to if you guys remember when I did the clone trooper showcase. Okay, so I gave Gree, I gave my commander Gree the minigun, minigun. This was a similar build that I did with that, so only with some modifications. Modifications for starters, a larger brick piece, a piece in here connecting that thing like the stud launcher, stud launcher, and said this gun together, and together, and it just represents like her giant ammo here, and then with this gun. And then with like this extra gun, this was actually improvised. Improvised. So the previous weapon that I had used and that I used before, I don't have any other extras of. So I and so when seeing that, I had to make some modifications and think that like, okay, what can I use as sort of an alternative, alternative for uh, for Coco? And then I thought that like maybe if I can use like one of these other guns, like these uh, like some of the iconic Lego guns, maybe I can modify it, modify it, and then add it on and add it on to the character. So with some modification, modification, and uh, this doesn't look perfect, but, uh, but I'll fix it later. But uh, with some detailing and some modification, this adds on, adds on, so like Coco can hold the gun, hold the gun, and fire away, fire away. It was a little uh, overall. This character was uh, was a little bit interesting to build, and interesting to build. But with the final results, I think it pulls off, pulls off, uh, pulls off portraying Coco pretty well. Next up on our list is Fox, and pretty much. Uh, not just the easiest character I made in this showcase, but probably the easiest Ruby character, eh, Ruby character that I've done because his outfit is very, very simple. Very simple. Like he's got, he's got a sleeveless, sleeveless like reddish orange shirt, uh, black pants, uh, pants, red and gray shoes, and gray shoes. And overall, just making the character, the only like real difficult parts, or parts to making this, and this was like his weapons and a couple of accessories. Other than that, and that said, uh, this was pretty, this was pretty simple to do. Able to do, and I really like how this came out. So when looking at the character, character, his whole torso is painted, is painted on in a red orange, an orange that I painted on and that I made on my own. It's the same color that I also used for like his, for like his tonfa, and like his tonfa on the side, the side. They look really, really cool, and cool. On uh, the back, you could see like I went back for like some red detailing of like some of these scars that he has, and that he has on his arms, in his arms. Uh, same thing with his like bottom lip, and lip. Uh, his eyes, since uh, since the character is blind, the character is blind. These were pretty. It was pretty easy uh, to just like paint, and just like first uh, paint and uh, paint over the face that I selected, and then took a white, then took the white marker and just made some dots onto the eyes. So that was pretty easy to do. Um, the hair piece, hair piece is mixed with like a copper red, uh, copper red kind of color, uh, color because I thought that looked cool. And this hair piece was actually actually the original hair piece. Uh, Airpiece to like the into like the Link minifigure. If you guys remember when I did I did Link from Breath of the Wild for my sister, sister like months ago, months ago, I kept the hairpiece, hairpiece. Like this was the original hairpiece for it, but I removed it from that minifigure because I felt that like this was too weird, 
bit weird for that kind of character. So I thought that like maybe I can I can improvise it. Like I almost thought about throwing it away that time, but then I thought that like maybe there'll come a day for I could use it, use it. And looking at it further and further, I thought that like hmm maybe just come out here for a fox, out here for a fox. And it's not ideal, but it does kind of pull it off, pull it off of like his general hairstyle, hairstyle. The only other alternative I would have gone with, uh, with would be. Man, it would be like the hair piece, hair pieces that he used for Dante, Dante from Devil May Cry. Okay. Anyways, anyways, with the rest of the character, uh, he's got like his little ammo click on this side. I did double check to see if he had another one on this side. He does not. He does not. So I took like the two, the two pieces that I had cut out, glued them together, and together, and attached them, attached them onto here. Unfortunately, as a result, I can't fully bend this arm all the way back as I used to. But I guess that's okay. That's, that's okay. Um, there is some more articulation in his legs, however. However, so that's very nice, nice, because you can see like some sanding that he did in for where like the legs would connect it's to the waist piece. I'm doing this for now on when it comes and when it comes to like like into when it comes to minifigures that I'm going to sand and gonna like sand at least these parts of the legs a little bit underneath the waist, and then also like on the sides of the arms and the arms as best I can, as I can. But when doing that, you do need to be careful because. Careful, especially in the arms, because if you sand off too much of it, you might wind up creating a hole inside of the hand, inside of the hand, and attaching, attaching the hand inside of the arm probably won't work. Won't work. So there's definitely a measurement that you really need to do. You need to do on making sure that it's not too deep, but deep enough to where you can add on that detailing and and do articulation in the arm. A better another way to help is if you sand and like on the sides of the waist. Uh, on the sides, like on the waist and the torso. If you do that, it should be able to help. Able to help. And then with the tonfa, tonfa were pretty and were pretty easy to do. Easy to do. I just took some clay and sculpted around, and around each hand, each hand, and then did and then did like sort of a weird thing, like he does on the, sh like he has on the show. That like you can see, there's still a gap in the hands. I just took some clay, stuck it on the front of it, front of it, then merged it on the back, uh, on like the bottom part of this, and then like merged it with the rest. You know, the rest of the side of the weapon. Mm, the weapon. Weapon. I, at first, I thought about maybe doing the same thing that I did with Yang. And with my two Yangs on adding in, like, one of those special pieces. One of those, like, uh, you know, like cuff pieces. Cutting off cutting off the link. Uh, sanding it a little bit. And then modifying around it. But then the more I thought about it, the more I have right, then thought that, like, hey, he's not really going to be holding anything. Holding anything in the future. So, how about we just make it for where it's all one piece together and it should work. It work. So after the sculpting, then doing the painting, and small detailing. The detailing, not too much of it. But afterwards, with the overall result, all results, this was a pretty simple build to do, and that's actually good. Actually good, because with all the craziness, craziness that I did with some of the other Ruby characters, it's nice to do something simple every now and then. So and then so this was a fun build to do. You know to do. And I think overall it shows up as the portray for Fox. So next up on our list is Velvet. Velvet. This one I think is one of the most memorable characters from Team Coffee because she was first introduced to us in the first volume, you know, like the first of the team to get introduced, introduced, and her semblance is definitely iconic. And I'll explain to, I'll explain that as I go on. So we're doing this character. Character was a little bit interesting of how to do. Like as you can see, like she's got the colored eyes, and eyes that I still kept up with the anime characters. Um, her hairpiece, hairpiece is an extra hairpiece, hairpiece from like these bunch of minifigures that I had lying around around and I have a lot of this kind of hairpiece so much so that uh, it's not quite as common as like the Superman hairpiece hairpiece but uh, I do have enough to the point where I was just like what am I gonna do with all of these hair pieces hair pieces so it wasn't like my overall original idea to do but when looking at uh, looking at pictures of velvet more and more I then thought that like it does kind of pull off like her overall design a design I think just with a little bit of sanding a little bit of sanding on the back and the top and adding in the rabbit ears. We can make something and make something. So with the modifications and also doing a little bit of trimming on the bangs on the bangs after with the overall results and all in some paint work and some paint job. It does look pretty good and good and matches up with velvet. Uh, we move the camera a little bit. So like you could see hey, like her torso was pretty simple to do. Pretty simple to do and to do on draw cast. I guess I just uh, I just joined like this bra I just drew in the brown and the black. I continued on, in it on all the way through with the back, you know, with the back, which you can see with that. And yeah, that's um, I did modify modify the symbol a little bit, a little bit because when this printed off, the symbol was all scrunched up, scrunched up. So I had to like paint over it and fix it. Uh, excuse me, fix it as best I could, as I could, 
It it's, uh, doesn't have like the original stitch <laughs> stitch heart together because since it uh, since the heart like would have been so tiny, you would barely see any of that. So I didn't include that in because and because it, as there's no point on including like that very small detailing detailing if you're gonna print it off and the figure itself is gonna be more more lifelike. So anyways, anyways, on um, with the arms you can see like some sculpted uh, these sculpted all shoulder pads on both sides uh, on both sides. Luckily, I only had to do this once. Put this ones and include those on. I then painted on, you know, like the wrist, you know, like the wrist pieces, these pieces over here that turned out really, really good. Um, I also painted on like the back of the boots and and like some more armor lining up around the legs and the legs and as well as the belt waist, belt waist, belt waist. Um, there is some articulation into the legs, the legs. Not a whole lot though, mostly because I didn't sand this leg and sand these legs. This whole figure was originally like a brown base. And I decided to like maybe if I keep it like that, it should overall work. Overall work. So not a whole lot. And there is articulation into it, but with paint like this, I probably need to be careful with it. Or with it. So I didn't worry too much about it. Now moving on to like her weapon. Like her weapon, as you can see, she's got her iconic camera. I forgot the official name for it. Name for it. Name for it. But there was actually some modifications that I did. So first I just kept it in the standard like black kind of camera. But then looking at pictures more and more of the camera, I realized that like, hmm, there's actually more to this camera. More to this camera. So looking at the photo references, eh, photo references, I tried to paint it up to match up with her overall camera design. Camera design as best I could. Like you could see like the screen on the back. Uh just got the little flash on the top. I extended like the lens a little bit. So, like I first sanded off the original and then then sculpted on my own. On our own to glue it on here, and then went back and did the detailing for it. Detailing for it. I focused mostly, uh, mostly on the camera because, uh, as on her show, her semblance is. I forgot the official name for it, but it's like photographic memory, uh, memory for what she has. Like her power is basically, basically like, uh, like with her camera, she takes pictures, pictures of like people's weapons. Like say for instance, for instance, uh, she uh, she took a picture of like Ruby with her scythe, with her scythe. With the camera and with like some special light dust inside said camera, her semblance works for where like she can actually really create a light copy of of the weapon and actually mimic and make the weapon and also the person's like combat style, combat style. So it really makes it unique, and that's sort of like one of the reasons why I didn't like give her ever like an overall weapon because uh, because of her semblance, I wouldn't know of like what kind of weapon to do and a weapon to do, and I generally don't like making. I don't like making like uh, uh, like copies copies of like some stuff that I've already done already done unless it's for like certain occasions and I finally decided that like that I like the camera is pretty much her weapon so we might as well just keep it on you know as it is as it is and if I do like some if I do like some art and some like artwork uh, for I work with the character I can like uh, Photoshop like sort of like you know, like the weapons and detail them out through there so. In about through there, so that way it can still match up with the overall design of the character. So this one was a little bit challenging, challenging with like some of the detailing and the sculpting, but it also falls in line with Fox for where it was pretty simple to do overall. And I think I think like uh, when looking at it, looking at it overall, overall, I think this matches up and is up for what Velvet would look like as a Lego minifig. And last but certainly not least for the showcase is Yatsuhashi. Let's see. So this character. Character was actually one of the first one, first ones that I got started on, on and on, but uh, was, uh, but was like one of the last ones uh, to get done. So when doing this character, character was kind of interesting to do and do, because when looking at Yatsuhashi, I realized I like, okay, I'm gonna do this as a tall character. Luckily, I still had a couple of extras, uh, extra like tall figs, so I took, uh, so I took one of them and first started off like adding in like the sculpting, sculpting for the character. Like you could see, he likes. You know, like the clay like on the arms and then like his massive shoulder pad shoulder pad on here this was a little bit interesting to do interesting to do but once i got once i got the idea of how i wanted to do this how i wanted to do it i sculpted on uh, as best i could and it added in like the wrist uh, the wrist armor armor on there i also then uh, so then like added in like the fabric fabric like waist cape waist cape which i'm thinking about maybe changing the method in the future and changing the method in the future i'm thinking maybe yeah, maybe if I can do, if I can get like one of those like uh, custom clone trooper waist capes, these capes, and sort of like uh, trace it around as like a template, I think I might be able to do and make actual waist uh, waist capes and put them on without having the risk, I mean the risk of them getting stuck onto the legs, because that actually happened a couple of times with some other characters, 
characters. So if I can figure that out in the future, that might be uh, be a better approach. But anywho, anywho, the overall rest of the character was hand painted as well, hand painted as well, and sort of done in layers. Like I first did the black underneath, then I went back and I actually changed the green a couple of times, a couple of times. Like at first, first the green was a little bit darker, then I changed it to change it to lighter, into a lighter shade in the shade. So I did that a few times. And a few times, and then like matched it all the way around, all the way around the base of the character, character, and the same thing, same thing with the waist down here. Uh, the legs are simple painted black, but I did went back and added in like you can see like the brown underneath, underneath that like it's a dark kind of, it's a dark brown. Uh, same thing, same thing with the rest of the waist up here, and then like this, you know, like this. Uh, as I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be like the sheep for where he would like take his sword and attach it to the back. Uh, the sword actually came out smaller than I was expecting. I was expecting. I honestly thought this thing was going to be as big as, like, Double Sword Dante. And when I show it to you guys, the Buster Sword for Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. But this actually was pretty easy to do. Easy to do. I just took, like, I just took a rod, uh, sculpted, and uh, sculpted, like, the overall, like, shape of the blade. Of the blade on, uh, onto the weapon. And then once that dried, I went back and did, like, a, and did a copper paint. And then did the gold outline, line overall around it. And it's, and this actually was easier to do than I expected. I expected. I almost thought it was going to be gigantic and take, but in the final idea, it's just like, oh, this actually turned out easy. So I'm pretty, so I'm pretty glad for that. Um, you can see like these grayish, bluish, almost like armor pieces down here. I might have messed up the feet a little bit uh, because when I went back, I saw that like the armor is actually more on the top of the boot, less on the front of it. But by the time I realized that, I was already too far in. So it's just like, well, we might as well just leave it as it is because I can't paint. And pay any further onto it, and I want to move on with the rest of my life. My life. Um, one complaint that I would uh, that I would give to the figure is the face. The design of the face I'm fine with. I went like when I saw like the regular minifig fake face for it, I thought this matched up with Yatsu's face. Yatsu's face. However, you could see like these like sort of you know, like uh, clunky kind of kind of bits on the face, and that was because the paint I was working with. One of them is very old, so it got very clunky. Very clunky, and unfortunately, like, like I do like the like skin color that I did and that I did grab and I did use for Yatsu. It does match up well, but just on just when looking at the face of the fact of how it's so clunky, and clunky, I don't like of how it looks. How it looks, and it's just like, oh my god, that is that is not a good color. That is not a good design. It makes it look weird, almost like almost like it's a wax figure and it's slightly melted. They melted, so that is a regret I have with this figure. This figure. So if I get better paints for the future, if, so if I get better paint in the future, in the future I might go back and like reach and like try to fix it, fix it. But it does still keep up with the overall design of the face, so I am glad for that. And actually, with the hair piece, hair piece was a same idea that I did with Luther, Luther from Umbrella Academy. However, I used a different hair piece, hair piece. So what I used instead was. And was instead of like the Superman hairpiece that I used for Luther, I took look like one of the well, actually it kind of is a Superman hairpiece hairpiece, but I took like one of the hair pieces that I keep using you that I keep using in some of my showcases faces. A good comparison is the Connor on our minifig from the Trip Become Human. I took one of those hair pieces and proceeded to sand off as much as I could much as I could all the way until this turned out into be a good buzz cut. Buzz cut. And after that, uh, looking at it again. And again, I really like of how this looks. How this looks. Because it matches up matches up with Yatsu's hairstyle. Hairstyle. And overall, I think this looks like a pretty cool hairpiece. Hairpiece. So I might try this again in the future. And this again in the future. And I actually like this. And to wrap it up, I don't know, with like, if you're wondering what's the shiny uh, what is the shiny stuff and stuff. This is actually a shiny green acrylic marker that I found uh, that I found in my box. In my box. And I decided to use that because especially on this side, this side, it's more sh and his shoulder is like more shiny, more shiny. So I took the marker, marker, and like drew all the outlines, outlines around there. And I think it looks pretty cool. So aside from the face and the face, this was an interesting, interesting like big, you know, like tall figure to do. And overall, uh, overall, overall, I'd go back and fix the face. But aside from that, I've not said this did turn out to be a pretty cool build. And overall, that's gonna do it for this episode of Lego Arts. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, aside from from like the cons that I mentioned throughout the showcase, I think overall this turned out to be a pretty cool Ruby showcase. Okay, these characters were definitely a little bit easier to do than easier to do than Volume Seven, especially 
especially with characters like uh, Ruby, Weiss, Blake, Yang, and Gang, Penny, and Penny, Penny, Jean, and a few others, no others. But overall, overall, I think with the final results of each of these characters, I think it looks really, really cool. And I'm hoping, and I'm hoping in like, in like, a, in like the future volumes for Ruby, in volumes for Ruby, we get to see these characters on, and we get to see these characters again, because I think, because I think this team, this team would make a cool, it would make like a cool comeback. I'm back on like seeing Team Ruby again, Ruby again. I know that their adventures are continuing on in the books. I haven't read, I haven't read all of them a little bit. I only read a little bit of After the Fall, but that was like a sample of it. So, oh, uh, I'm hoping in the future, future to read the full book because it does sound pretty interesting, and I do want to see like the adventures with these characters, characters. So for some mix, uh, for uh, so for some other showcases, showcases. The next one is gonna be Salem. Hey, we're gonna do the Salem showcase, and then after that, we're gonna do the Final Fantasy VII remake showcase. Okay, so okay, so I'm gonna get to work on those. Uh, I'm recording those showcases, and I should have them up, have them up on the channel. The channel either either the Salem showcase will be either later on today, or if not today, it'll definitely be up tomorrow. Uh, but be sure to keep your eyes and ears peeled for that for all that. And if you guys want to see like some of my other Ruby showcases, okay, so like the volume uh, the volume seven three parter parter or the or the first Ruby showcase I did, you can check all of those out as well in my Lego Arts playlist, as long uh, as well as like some of the other projects that I've already done. So, anyways, if you guys would like to see more videos like this in the future, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. It really, really helps us. Okay, last place, like button, and better have some fun. So, uh, so, anywho, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, hit that like button, comment below what you think, share your friends, subscribe to YouTube, follow me on Twitch, and here's a hop on the road. Ah, woo! Woo! Thank you guys. I'll see you next time. What do you guys, Moonrise is? Oh.